billions of dollars are already flowing into thousands of companies, both established players and well-funded startups. But there's a lot of uncertainty and plenty of hype around AI, which can make evaluating vendors and their claims challenging unless you clearly understand what artificial intelligence is and what it's capable of doing for your business. I'm Paul Raitzer, founder and CEO of Marketing Artificial Intelligence Institute. In this video, you'll learn what questions to ask when it's time to buy AI-powered technology. Not all AI is created equal. Just because one vendor says they use machine learning to do something or natural language processing doesn't necessarily mean it's better than what you're already doing. So if you're buying a marketing automation system, CRM, email marketing, social media, advertising management, whatever you're buying, you just wanna buy smarter tech. The challenge is vendors aren't sure how to explain this and position it. So there's a lot of confusion in the marketplace as to exactly what AI is when it's built into this tech. And that makes it difficult for us as marketers to evaluate it. When we think about buying the technology, what questions should we ask? I like to think of it in three specific categories. There's questions about the company, there's questions about the technology, and then there's questions about what does it mean to your team? When it comes to the company itself, one of the most important things is, do they have a public point of view on artificial intelligence? I wanna see a very clear explanation from their top leadership about their investment in AI. Related to that is, what is their product roadmap? They should be guiding you on how the next three to five years are going to look, how they're gonna continually make you better at your job. Another key one is ethics. They need to have a point of view about the ethical use of AI. This is a tricky one and not many have it, but it's a question I would be asking them. Where does the data come from? How do they use the data? How do you ensure that there's no bias within the tools you're gonna to be using to be reaching out to consumers and customers? The other piece that's gonna be critical is how do they help your team understand AI and use this technology because it's different than the traditional technology you would use. So the technology itself, I'll, I'll make this one kind of simple. How does it make what you're doing smarter? Take your specific use case to the vendor and the specific outcomes that you wanna achieve. Say, I understand you use AI to do content strategy, for example. Here's how I do content strategy today. Here's the 10 steps I go through. Explain to me how your smarter tool makes that process more efficient and increases the likelihood that I'm going to achieve the outcome I desire. But when you talk to vendors, many of them really struggle to explain the real benefit of AI in their product. So with the challenges of dealing with vendors, it's important that as marketers, we have a better process. What we devise is what we call the marketer to machine scale. So you can start to understand how you can buy technology better. So starting with level zero, all marketer is what we call it. And that means all human all the time. There is no AI in anything. The software doesn't get better on its own. You write all the rules to tell the software what to do, and it only gets better if you get better. So that is where we are today. Most of the tech you're using is at level zero. Level one is mostly marketer. So now you're starting to use AI in some components, some features, and the AI is assistive, like a, a really powerful intern. It's there to help you do a bunch of administrative tasks. So if we think about a use case of sending an email newsletter, Maybe you've gotten an AI that can write the subject lines for the newsletter. You still plan the content, you still schedule everything, you figure out the list, you write the copy, you figure out the CTAs. Everything else is still on you as the marketer, but the machine now writes the subject line for you. And the way it does that is it learns from the hundreds or thousands of previous emails you've sent and predicts the subject line that'll get someone to open. Level two is half machine, half marketer. Now in this case, the machine is really starting to drive efficiencies in your job. It might actually be starting to create some of the copy for the newsletter. It might be picking the lists and it might even be personalizing send time based on previous open rates. So you start to see this example where the machine is truly becoming a sidekick to the marketer, giving the marketer these superpowers but the marketer still has to be there, still has to provide the input, still has to provide oversight and performance, still telling the machine what to do, still figuring out to do with the predictions, signing off on the subject lines. The machine's not doing it all itself, but more and more of those individual tasks within that larger use case of the email newsletter are now being done by the machine. Level three is mostly machine. Now in this case, in select conditions, it's actually functioning on its own. 
it might write the subject lines. It might even personalize the subject lines to individuals. It's going to send it individual times to people based on past times and dates when they open their emails. It's going to start making decisions and you as the marketer won't override those. You now trust the machine to make these decisions on its own. There are very, very few examples in marketing today of where that's happening. Uh, I would actually struggle to come up with one. So level three is very difficult to achieve with marketing technology where it is today, but that's where we may be going in the very near future. Level four is all machine. Picture this as the car without the steering wheel. You just get in and it drives itself. I know it's a scary thought, but think about email or social media or CRM or automation, whatever it may be, your advertising spend, where you put your creative, what the creative is. Imagine that the machine just has this uh, omnipresent knowledge of everything going on with your consumers, with your company, and it actually can make all these decisions on its own does not exist, probably won't exist. If someone tells you that their tool, their AI technology is full autonomy, hang up the phone, shut the zoom down, just go the other way. There is no such thing as full autonomy within marketing and there likely won't be at any point in the near future. The most important thing to realize is we're not trying to make marketing fully autonomous. We're not trying to remove the human from the equation. It's not about how advanced the AI is. What you want to know is, does it increase the efficiency of your job and does it help you achieve goals better? That is the most important takeaway. It's the whole idea of the marketer to machine scale. It's that things can be a one or a two on that scale. You know, it can be a little bit of machine help and that can make a world of difference between what you're capable of achieving and maybe what your competitors achieve. That's really what it comes down to. The last thing to consider is what does it mean to your team when you buy this technology? And a good way to think about this is what is your team capable of doing now and what are they going to need to know to use this product moving forward? Do they have the right training? Do they have the right skill set? Do you even have the right people who want to learn these things? Does the vendor provide training? We just did a big research project, the, the 2021 State of Marketing AI report, and what we found was 70% of marketers said the biggest barrier to adoption of AI is lack of education and training. A lot of these vendors are VC-funded startups. They don't ha have fully built out suites of onboarding materials and knowledge bases. And so it might be on you to actually teach your team how to use the technology. So you need to know what does the onboarding process look like? How long until we see value from this if our team isn't trained to use it? Is it going to make what you do smarter, more efficient? Is it going to increase the probability of success? And what does it mean to your team and how is it going to change the roles and the marketing department overall? The more you know about AI and understand what it's capable of and the questions you should be asking vendors, the better chance you have of finding smarter technologies that will create value for your company and for you and give you a competitive advantage in your career.